We have just finished our convention in Abiyokuta, where I emerged as the flag bearer of our great party, the African Democratic Congress, for the 2023 presidential elections. I am humbled and grateful and commit to lead you all to victory in that election. There were several aspirants in this election, all patriotic, determined to serve their fatherland. But as in all contests, only one person will emerge. In the case of our party, we are all winners. I once again extend a handshake of peace and partnership to them and ask that they continue to support our party. To their supporters, I say elections are not war. We all went in because of love for country. We are all Nigerians with a common purpose, which is to rescue our nation. Please join me on this rescue mission. I want to seize this opportunity to thank members of the Board of Trustees, members of the National Working Committee, the local organizing committee of the convention, who gave us a befitting free and fair election. I also thank all our delegates who demonstrated a high sense of patriotism in participating in this convention. A special thanks to all the state chairmen who did a yeoman's job in leading their delegates to the convention. We now have an election to win and all hands must be on deck. We have a shared vision for our country, a nation that works for all, a nation that leaves no one behind, a nation that supports the poor, weak and elderly, a nation that promotes meritocracy and shuns mediocrity, a nation that invests in our citizens and protects their rights and freedoms, a nation that creates an enabling environment for the able and willing to work and thrive, a nation that's not divided by religion, tribe and tongue, this is our collective vision, a vision of shared hope and prosperity, a vision of secured borders and roads, a vision of world-class infrastructure, a vision that sees Nigerians respected all over the world because we are the greatest nation on earth. This is the ADC vision. This is who we are. This is what sets our party apart. We are nation builders, not nation destroyers. And so we will fight for our country. We will labor till we win this election. We will climb that hill with hope and optimism in our hearts. We will hold up the ADC flag at the mountaintop and declare that Nigeria is finally free. We can only do this if we are united. Unite. We must. We are ADC. We will arise and shine. God bless you all. ADC. So, it's a rescue mission. Rescue mission 2023. You may be Kachuku for president. Join the train. You may be Kachuku. Now the man on the rescue mission. 2023. Now the time to save our nation. From the east to the west. We deliver for north or south. Go and get your PVC. Where you go for tonight, ADC? Since go day affordable. The cost to maybe is capable. Chai, my brother, life go change. If we vote to maybe help is on the way. To maybe it's on the way. To maybe it's on the way. To maybe it's on the way. Vote to maybe help is on the way. To maybe it's on the way. To maybe it's on the way. To maybe it's on the way. Vote to maybe help is on the way. To maybe it's on the way. To maybe. Yes, so 2023 is another opportunity for us to make it right. Make we shine our eye well, well to choose visionary leader when me well for us. Do maybe catch you for president, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Go and get your PVC. Yes. Um, welcome to the platform. Um, it's an honor to have the presidential candidate um, representing the ADC uh, on our platform, it's more or less a town hall where everybody gets to ask a question. Uh, we are very lucky to have him because he had a surprise party planned for him in his house, which he has had to sneak out of to attend to us. Um, so without much ado, uh, we are about four or five here at the moment. Uh, the more people come, the more everybody asks a question. So I would like to start with Dr. Ezebo. Um, to please go ahead and ask our candidate a question uh, regarding his policies or whatever you deem fit so we can have an answer from him. 
Yes. Hello. Good afternoon or good evening over there. Um, I just wanted to have an idea from your perspective, what you think is the most um, important, the biggest challenges that we have in Nigeria right now, and what you think that you can do to help to move the country forward. Because it seems to me like um, just from somebody living abroad, just hearing about what's going on in Nigeria, it sounds like um, there's not much hope. Um, it sounds like the country is captive to forces that um, are posing existential challenges to the nation. And it seems to me like um, we are playing the same old games that uh, made sense in the maybe 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s. And we're not keeping up with the challenges of the future. You know, we have this climate change problem. We have poverty we have religious intolerance. We have insurrectionists. We hear all these things about people coming into the forest that are either foreigners or local people colluding with the government. Some people say colluding with local people. How do you think that you're going to be able to tackle these amazing, amazingly complex problems? Thank you. Thank you. Uh Thank you, Dr. Um, Ezibo. Um, how about I pronounce the name? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Um, hmm. The question of Nigeria, you as uh, someone living um, overseas, you've actually described it. So I tell people Nigeria is like um, a bucket with many holes. So if you have 30 holes in a bucket and you plug one hole, the bucket will still be leaking. So we have multifaceted problems in Nigeria and we, we've got to approach it plugging all the holes. So there's not one problem that is bigger than the others. We just have to have an approach that plugs all those holes. So um, when you hear people come with... Um, a three-point agenda, a four-point agenda, when you have a hundred points, a, a, a hundred whole problem, it, it doesn't work. We are a nation that has failed and feels spectacularly on all fronts. There's nothing working in Nigeria, absolutely nothing working. Um, the leadership we have in place now is the worst leadership in the history of Nigeria. And the biggest fear we have as a people is if we'll survive um, uh, the end of this year or the end of this administration. Um, what do we need right now is to change direction, a 360 degree change in leadership and in approach. We were elected successful leaders on the basis of tribe, religion, and tongue, on the basis of a party structure, a PDP, a party structure that does not produce the best. Can you hear me? Hello? Sorry, sorry. If, um, sorry our, our guest is talking. I would encourage everybody to be on mute until they're called upon to ask a question. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so, so we have uh, um, the way we produce candidates from parties, especially two main parties, doesn't lend itself to producing the best person to lead Nigeria, right? Um, fortunately for us, we now have a situation where we have those two parties producing Atiku and um, and Buhari and um, uh, Tinubu, Asiwaju Tinubu. And with the problems we have in Nigeria now, we believe that Nigerians are definitely, definitely going to look the other way. With all our problems, we have to also understand that Nigerians are problems themselves because. We have this our party who have been abused for decades and we have this our party towards anything that has to do with government, elections, and what have you. So every election cycle, we have about 10 million people from the rural areas who determine who will be president of Nigeria. People like you and I who reside in Nigeria don't vote. They never vote. Election day is a day for picnic or parties, so they don't vote. And... After, after elections, they start complaining in beer parlors and everywhere in their homes, complaining about governance and policies. But 
They didn't exercise their fundamental, their fundamental rights and their patriotic rights to, to vote. So Nigerians will also be on the ballot. What are you going to do at this time? If I were to highlight a problem, like I said to you, there are multiple problems. So if I were to highlight a problem, one of the big existential problems we have right now, it will be an issue of security. Um, I play a role there. One of my companies manages what we call the public safety network of Nigeria. We've, do, we've done this for the last seven, eight years. It's a GSM network built by Nigerian government. It's supposed to provide comm services to all the security agencies. We're also supposed to pro provide strategic um, uh, um, uh, policies and design solutions for the security agencies. In, in almost 13, 14 years, they have not used one, not one, not one solution, not one service. Four months to Chibok, I personally wrote four memos saying that schools in that area were soft target and that this is what needed to be done. They didn't respond, Chibok happened. I wrote about barracks, that barracks would be a major victory for these guys if they were to attack a barrack and take it over. They didn't do anything. Just last year, just a few months ago, I had high-level meetings concerning Kaduna routes, this train. Tell you what, what I was told, first four months of this year, this government didn't give our security agencies one naira. One naira was not given to them. Where they have to do six patrols, six or seven sorties, they can only do one. They don't have diesel, they don't have fuel. The body language of the current administration is such that they don't really care. It seems like the president is trying to alter, alter the population demographics of Nigeria by letting uh, a group of people into Nigeria. And obviously, you know, we have a minister of comms who is a, um, a terrorist sympathizer who is now in charge of an element of making someone a citizen in Nigeria through NIMSI. So they let these people walk into Nigeria, take over our farmlands, kill our people. No one has control over them. And now our security agencies call certain parts of Nigeria ungoverned spaces. Ungoverned spaces means that they have no control, governmental control, security control over large swaths of Nigeria. Tell you what, around Abuja, there are some areas that are called ungoverned spaces. Nigeria is at risk. Security has to tackle with strong instructions, clear mandate to our security agencies. And we need to then start bringing, hiring more people because we're just two, about 2 million strong and we have a war on multiple fronts. We need to hire more people. We need to empower or equip men and women who are willing and able to take on this fight. We cannot continue to let people come in and kill our people and do nothing about this. We need to let our people know that we're clearly behind them in taking these people on and defending their lives and property. Um, uh, in Abuja, for example, or in most cities in Nigeria, something as simple as having radar is non-existent. Something as simple as having drones that, ha uh, that have huge payloads that can actually um, uh, survey um, our cities, non-existent. The most basic security infrastructure that is needed by a country in a time of war does not exist in Nigeria. There's a huge contract bazaar going on, but they don't invest money in the right areas. ISIS, the head of ISIS was killed by a drone with a, 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 a drone with a pointed missile. That's what they are doing all over the world. We are just committing troops in fighting a war and they're selling us out. Beyond agriculture, if you look at the economy, we have twin issues of recession and inflation all over the world. What are governments doing? Governments are supporting their citizenry, right? Making huge concessions, grants, and what have you, so that businesses can survive, so the economy can be stabilized, so that there's a, there's a multiplier effect in the economy. In Nigeria, what are we doing? We are taxing, taxing, taxing. The government is, is totally clueless. They just they know they don't know what to do in any area of the economy. Power sector, as we all know, has failed completely. They have not been able to bring on 
new um, generate, generating capabilities or new transmission capabilities or new distribution cap capabilities. They sold our power companies to their cronies who have, don't have the requisite investment to make into these companies. So Nigerians are struggling. Meanwhile, they are um, increasing the rates um, the rates that people are paying for consume power. There's no sector that we can touch on that is working, right? And at a critical point like this, Nigerians still keep on making the mistake of thinking that experience can be found in those people who have been in government. They keep on making that mistake. Anytime I go for an interview, people will ask me, how, what makes you qualified? And that question amazes me a lot because I, I always wonder, they ask me that question thinking or, or implying that if you look at the likes of Atiku and all these people that they have, they have been part of government. So that only those who have been part of government are qualified to run government. And I always say to them, these people have been part of a failed government. They failed Nigerians. They've not succeeded in doing anything right. And you think that is a qualification. That's something that they should boast about. At this time, we need someone who is able to manage his business, who is able to manage multiple businesses in a time like this, the time where the economy has failed, but you are still able to be dynamic in your approach. You are still able to stay afloat. You are able to be efficient. You are able to diversify. You are able to have all your hot button issues managed. Last thing I will say um, in regards to your question. One of the biggest challenges we have in Nigeria is that we don't know who we are as a people. We don't have a common charter that defines us as a people. That's why in the year 2022, we still talk about East, West, and South. We still talk about religion, what part of the country you come from. We don't know what is our commonality as a people. We don't know what we say is our common dream. We don't have common hopes and aspirations. It's every man to himself, God for us all. The first task of the next president is to unify all Nigerians under a common charter. That charter is the dream that we must all, all fight for, that we will all buy. That charter is what will be the new constitution that works for all Nigerians. This is what we must all do. Secondly, we can no longer have a country where the rich and the poor, where you have this gap between the rich and the poor. We must all share and suffer alike. My first bill to the National Assembly is a bill I call the National, National Patriot Act. It's a bill that says if you're in public service or if you're in government, your family and you, you have to use public schools, public hospitals. If you fly within Nigeria, you have to, if you travel within Nigeria, you have to travel by road. You can't have a generator in your house. You can't have a borehole in your house. You've got to feel what the masses are feeling so that you will do everything possible to improve the lots of Nigerians. That's going to be one of my first bills as president of Nigeria. I know I, um, you, I, I know my question took a touch us through, but I hope I answered your question, Dr. Zibo. Yes, I think you gave a very detailed explanation but well, you know, but that, that comes to, sorry, I won't keep you too long. I know you're busy. Um, but I think the, the biggest issue is, which they always talk about, the big parties, PDP and the APC is the organization at the grassroots le level. Um, because they, they call it, is this stomach, stomach um, voting or something? I hear this. Infrastructure. Stomach infrastructure. Yeah, something like that. I keep wondering, um, the organization at the grassroots obviously is key because the point obviously is well taken. Many Nigerians understand the problems. And we do understand that the people in power do not give power up easily. 
power is not going to be given up just because somebody comes with good ideas. What, what is happening? What are you planning to do to organize at the grassroots level, at the level of the churches, the mosques, the local chiefs and, you know, the small people? If you don't have that organization, I don't see how ideas will change people. Nigerians are, I don't think they are ready for. <laughs> I so so I, will let, I will let our <laughs> guest uh, answer that question. But before he does, can, okay, okay, you've had your hand up for a while. Now, can you just yes. add another question to what uh, Dr. Ezebo has, has asked? Okay, um, good, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I appreciate your efforts, my brother, and your determination to change Nigeria as it seems. I do not doubt your capabilities and your abilities. You are a media guru, and I know you are sound. From what you have said so far, and from all I've read about you, you are ably qualified to turn the fortunes of this country around. I am not in doubt of your abilities. And for be that as it may, Nigeria, as it seems right now, is a complex um, society. And to achieve your aspirations and the aspirations of many people behind you, you will definitely need a lot of votes and mobilization. I represent an organization called um, the Movement for Positive Change. I am the national coordinator of this group. We have offices nationwide. We have mobilized in the past for um, credible people we consider credible, but they have seemingly not made a headway. But right now in the, in the history of Nigeria, this is a very important time in the history of Nigeria, it seems like the awareness is quite high. Nigerians are doing whatever they can to get registered and get their PVCs. And with the new electoral act, it seems something credible or close to credible could come out of the process. So I'm thinking that um, we need not be very good that we use this particular opportunity that we have in our hands with the high awareness to not to gamble it and throw it away. So I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking, not just like I said, you're ably qualified and I, and, I, and I like you, I like your gods. But don't you think we could all join hands and maybe support somebody with similar, similar aspirations such as you? Um, somebody in the, like um, Peter will be, I'm not campaigning for him, God knows, you know, but I'm just thinking with you and some other people of like minds, can't we all come together? And then since he seems to be making some waves right now, can't we all put our heads together and make sure we take power from these hounds that have kept us down? I'm uh, just thinking in, in that light. Uh, all right. All right. Your, we absolutely uh, understand. Uh, we'll, Don't you think we'll, we'll do that? Yeah, we'll give, we'll give our candidates a chance to answer. Thank you. Thank you, huh? Thank you very much. Thank um, you. Yeah. you. You asked the question that um, if I look at... Um, some messages I see on Twitter um, and um, a lot of people, um, a lot of former presidents have said um, said similar to um, Peter B and myself about collaboration, um, you know, and um, and working together and all, all of that stuff. Let me tell you something about me a lot of people don't realize. For the last two decades, um, beyond my businesses, I have been a key strategist to delivering elections and making people win. I've delivered several presidents, several governors. Um, I've influenced several people to be in office. And I am running this time around because for each time I've done that, it's always been a huge disappointment. I will tell you now why, um, and you and I want you to take note of everything I'm going to say now because you see it play out very, very soon. Okay. Are you there? Yeah, I'm listening. I'm trying to take, get um, the notes back here. Okay. So I I just ahead, yeah, I'm I here. Just, 
I just finished my primaries, right? Yeah. And one of the main contenders there was um, um, uh, Mohalu, right? Yeah. yeah. And we had a few weeks ago, a gentleman joined the race from Adamawa State, a not a disowned not an contender. The rest of us were from the south, right? And yeah. it seemed that with this guy, 20 northern states, this guy could pull an upset. We were several northerners, about 11 northerners and 11 um, southerners and one northerner. And he has 20 states, right? He could pull an upset and just win the primaries just because he was from the north. We make the mistake all the time thinking that elections are about our Twitter, um, Twitter chatter and what have you. Elections are about strategy calculations and numbers the numbers for elections in nigeria are numbers numbers that are found in the north people in the north who have those numbers are not prepared to support a peter b candidature peter b is a fine gentleman but you know the biggest mistake that was made in his campaign inside from pdp was they sold it as a campaign for the turn of the Igbo man. There's a pal people, if you don't live in Nigeria, you might not understand, but there's a palpable fear in Nigeria by most Nigerians from other sect sections of Nigeria of the Igbo man. I don't understand it, but there's a palpable fear. Even this man from the South South has a fear of the Igbo man. And when I encounter this all the time, I just wonder why. And it seems that the Igbo man still does not understand that if this exists, how do you get around this? How do you get people to identify you as being one of them to join you on your train? If you sell yourself as a sectional leader or being promoted as a sectional person, you lose your vote. So this was what happened with, with, um, with, um, with Mohalu. On the day of the election, he made a statement about it being the turn of the Igbos. He lost at least 700 votes just with that statement. He lost at least 700 votes just with that statement he made. It annoyed most, most of the Northern, Northern delegates. The next election will be about myself and Peter Obi. The other people who are on the ballot, most of them will not be able to compete in the area of ideas and issues. That is where I and Peter Obi will be competing day to day, galvanizing voters, debating on the issue. We will be debating on the issues that concern Nigeria. And I know that as this process is going on, we will weed out those people who have nothing to offer Nigeria. Does it make sense for one person to step down for the other? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Politics, what you see is this. We need for Nigerians to see APC and PDP as the, as the minority in this race and for them to see us as the majority. They can only see us there if we can amplify and magnify ourselves before Nigerians. Nigerians have continued to promote us as the candidates in this race and diminish these people. Now, if you ask one of us to step down for the other, we are further reduced there and all they can see is these people. If you look at mainstream media, right? Headline news every day. You will see, if the article, big bold he headlines. Tinubu, big bold headlines. P2B, smaller headlines. Kachiku, smaller headlines. It's a big problem because it's what we call mm. sub sublimal persuasion. Those who read it, those who are seeing that, in their minds is reinforcing to them that 
those guys are the serious contenders, the main contenders. That's what the media has always done. They promote these people as the serious people, the big parties. And we also, in our lexicon, just as you said, you've talked about them as the main people, but we have to redefine the language now. We now have to start talking about us, the serious contenders, the legitimate <laughs> contenders, those people as the guys who are jokers. This is a narrative we, start have, we have to start drumming up in the minds of people. This is the way we can <laughs> also bring what for Nigerians to see us as the people who are in play. Second, back to what um, uh, Dr. Izibu said uh, about the structure. Um, in running elections of uh, strategy, structure is not offices that you have in rural areas. A structure of a party is based on the aspirations of people, especially the damn ballot people. So if you have someone running for House of Assembly, because of his aspiration, he's protecting that, that area. Then the House of Reps build, builds on him, Senate builds on that, and the Guba builds on that, and the President builds on all of this. What are we trying to do? We are trying to run people in all the races so that because of their aspirations, they have to protect the balance there. Secondly, we're trying to get Nigerians to Understand that even though you're not a candidate, but you're also a candidate by defending the votes of these people by seeing it as your votes. Remember earlier on, I said to you that only people in the rural areas vote, right? Now, let me tell you something you might not know. There are 40 to 50, 50 million people in the urban areas who ought to vote, who ought to determine who the president of Nigeria is, who don't vote. The greatest or the best strategy towards winning the next election is to get people like you and I to vote. If we were to vote, you don't have to worry about rights or Rapa or Gary or the money they're sharing in the rural areas. Don't worry about that. The people in the urban centers, the city centers, the digital generation, if they were to vote, forget let them share all the money that they want to share. The people in the city won't collect that money. They don't need the money. Our job at mm. this time is to get these people registered to get them to believe that it's their patriotic duty and to get, get them to go out to vote. INEC understands this, the government in, in power understands this, and that's why they are making it extremely difficult for people to register to vote, because they know that anybody who is trying to register to vote right now is not going to vote for, for them. We have to keep on ramping up the pressure on these people, piling on the pressure for them to allow people to register. They said it ends at the end of June, but we're pushing that they extend it so that people can register. A lot of people registered newly in the Northeast and the Northwest. And if we look at the pattern of the registration, those are the people who are walking through our borders. <clears throat> the only way we can counter this is to have people, have our people, send messages to our people, get registered. Get all business people to tell their, um, um, their employees, get registered. Churches to tell their members, get registered. Everybody gets registered. That's the only way we can counter this. Thank you. Excellent. Um, it's a round robin stage. Um, like I said before, the um, presidential candidate had to come out of a party being hosted for him. But I'll pass the floor to Kenneth. Kenneth Aronsai, to yeah. please quickly ask... Um, his question. I think what we'll do is we'll take it two at a time. Once Kenneth asks his question, um, Shola, uh, sorry, Liz will ask a question and then we'll get our candidate to answer both. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first, I'll say congratulations to 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 Baby for getting to this point and the <laughs> courage courage of the answer. Can you point. put your video on to see your face? I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm not wearing a shirt right now. It's very hot here. I'll put I'll put it on later. No, Thank you very much. To to see you. <laughs> yeah, so congratulations. And uh, uh, first, I would like to say uh, yeah, once again, congratulations. And I'm very encouraged by the effort you've put into this. And I think it's high time for, like you said, people like us to get more involved. And I think that's where the big challenge is. And the question I was going to ask you, you just actually answered it before I, I asked the question, is how can we get that middle class, that middle set that we are talking about here to get involved in politics. It's been, it's been a challenge all these years. 
And I think that's the major thing we should be talking about here because we already accepted that, look, we can't keep on going back to the past. Uh, those two candidates we we're talking about were in the 1989 uh, Council Assembly with uh, uh, Babangida, and they are still the ones still coming up till, to get, till today. So uh, we need to energize the middle class and the elites and the young people to get out there and play a role in politics. And that's what my question would have been. What are your plans towards that? What are strategies that you have in place? And that's one we want to, we want to be a part of. So that's my question. Okay. Thank you. Um, Liz, if you could just support that, please. Okay. Uh, hello, Dumebi. How are you? Can you hear me clearly? I can hear you. Yes. Yes. How are you? Oh, good, good. Uh, congratulations I'm on your... Liz, I'm looking forward to your question because... You're looking forward to it, right? Congratulations yeah. on your nomination. Uh, I wanted to ask you, you know, um, in the political space in Nigeria, we're now at the primaries and after this, each person would have, each party would have one candidate. Um, Nigeria is presently being run by the Nigerian diaspora. Nigerians uh, resource of change in terms of Nigeria is out here in the diaspora. If you wanted to engage uh, after the primaries or maybe prior to the primaries, I think you want to speak to the intellectual people in, uh, in the diaspora about your plans for Nigeria. Uh, sometimes I've, I've been on this uh, Zoom call for a minute. Um, I, I, I'm a media man just like you. Um, so we, we stick to specifics. I don't want us answering questions as if we're, in, we're drinking beer or we're relaxing. We want to have accurate questions, accurate answers, not one question specific, one answer. So if you, if you, you know, change each one and say you want to talk to the Nigerians and you want to talk to the intellectual Nigerians of today and you want to be heard by Nigerians and you want to be validated, I think it happens more in the diaspora. The, the two people you're up against, they made their names when we were children. You know, they don't, it, <clears throat> and I don't think they stand, um, they, they have good stead for this election. It's just who's going to take it. And you cannot be in the same pool. Um, you are not known in Nigeria, like you rightly said, compared the way the headlines come from the big channels with regards to these two people, with regards to what they've put down. If, if you wanted to energize Nigeria, I think you should, you should try to cross the pond. Maybe before, I, I don't know how the political system works, maybe after the primaries or maybe prior. I would have thought, yeah, I would have thought prior because I think at the end of so, the primaries. So, so, so Liz, sorry to interrupt. Um, the candidates' um, party have done their primaries. He's emerged as the presidential candidate for the ADC. Um, that is why he is deciding to engage with us at the moment. So a direct question will probably be... Uh, Let me ask it. Let me ask thank it. you. Okay. You are now the, you're now the primary candidate. What are your plans for campaigning to this side? Are you going to remain in Nigeria campaigning or are you going to involve the Nigerians on this side? Um, um, if you monitor the Edo State, Edo State elections, you will see the role the diaspora played in that in um, in, in those elections, right? In that election, and, um, and even though Edo State is pe peculiar because they have a lot of their people um, overseas, um, what effect or influence does the diaspora have over Nigerians? and their voting behavior. Let me say this, right? Diaspora um, uh, influence is mainly on Twitter where there's a lot of intellectual discourse, a lot of back and forth and what have you. Unfortunately, Twitter population does not vote. Facebook population. I pointedly in the last couple of activated followership in my um in uh, on my um corporate account where I have about seven hundred thousand followers there because I know that those people are the people who vote. A lot of people do it that don't vote. What's my strategy right now is to convert people in on Twitter to vote, and 
that's where you start having a lot of intellectual discourse. But tell you something about intellectual discourse. The time I used to convert a hundred people on Facebook, right? I'll use that same time to convert only one person on Twitter. That's why most campaigns ignore the people there. Those people there are just for popularity's sake, but they just ignore that. But it's a big mistake for us because intellectual discourse is actually very important for, um, for us to begin to have a direction, a clear-cut direction as to where we want to go to in Nigeria. The solutions we need to solve our problems in Nigeria, where you can start finding talent, the requisite talents to, to, for this job, for this rescue mission. But because people know that um, any, in any intellectual discourse, there's a lot of back and forth and, and not just uh, come to a place to say, you know what, um, we, agree, we agree to disagree, right? <laughs> So that's what happens there. But for me, it's important. I mean, I am I, I live here in Nigeria and I also live in the US. For me, um, it's important for me to engage this community because that's where the pool I need to solve the problems of Nigeria, that's where they are, they are domiciled. I want to encourage these people to look back home. I want to build a community where the middle class is thriving, where these people are happy. I encourage you to come back and invest work live in nigeria okay so what carry them along so i'll be doing a lot of i mean i just finished my primary a few days ago and I, I i agreed to take this because it's important okay every conversation like this is important to me and i'm doing i'm going to do a lot of this and traveling all over the world to engage nigerians in diaspora because of can this. i just can i just tell so, somebody, else, somebody so, else yeah somebody else, sorry let me just round up somebody else is waiting quick quick thank you um um I, I, I lost my train of thought. But what I want to say to you is um, just, um, I think you need to rephrase certain, uh, certain meanings of the diaspora. The diaspora are the ones that made Nigerian entertainment what it is. The diaspora are the real presidents of Nigeria that feed every Nigerian and has done so for the last 20 or 30 years while the other guys do what they do. The diaspora, are the power of Nigeria. I can tell you that. We hear the same thing, just like how you say to us, diaspora don't live here. We hear the same thing from the people at home, that we don't matter. We don't. The diaspora, not just a dope in particular, peculiar or anything. Your strategy, you spoke about earlier, if your strategy is diaspora heavy, you will be heard by all Nigerians. If you pass the diaspora, you will pass Nigerians far easier than you think. I don't think there's anything... To, to talk to Nigerian politicians, there's not much they can tell us. It's what we can tell you that's missing. There's not much you can tell us about what you're going to do for Nigeria or how you're going to start. You need to listen to us as we have been surviving the people for the last 20 years. What do you people want for the people? It's the, it's, I, I think that's the message you need to go on. We can't listen to you. And that's being honest. We can't listen to Nigerian politicians that put Nigerians in the position they put them. You cannot have the solution from the same people. You have to go out to the Nigerians who have the, who have the, in today's, the only Nigerians we trust are the Nigerians in diaspora. Not the ones, not the politicians. And if you cannot get past Atiku and, um, and Ashiwaju because of their name, I think you should look at this market and try not to sound like them. If you beat this market, the whole world will hear you. More than they hear them. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. And I think um, that was part of what uh, Dumebi was saying, that he's going to engage the Nigerians in diaspora. Um, I will get um, Judah to quickly ask his question, then get um, Mr. Felix Idolo to ask a question as well. And um, I think we'll have to do it three at a time because time is of short notice for our candidate. After Mr. Idolo, can um, Mr. Richie George Please also ask a question. Thank you very much. Judah, you first. Um, thanks, everyone. Good afternoon, Dumabi. Hi, Judah. Um, my name is Jude Banyo. I don't know if the name does ring a bell, the son name. I'm from Onichuwa as well. But that's neither here nor there. I think you're a breath of fresh air. If we pick up from Lacey's point. We look at the people who are running for government today. They are the Atikus, they are the Tinubus. 
people whose names we've heard for so long. So I think you're a breath of fresh air. And when you talk to me, at this point, it's a bit like preaching to the choir. I have conditional faith in your candidacy, if it's worth anything. Thank you. But to lend credence to what Lace is saying, I do not believe, and that is not to undermine you in any way, that you can beat these people at that game. Yeah, I guess you're going to be the only presidential candidate I can actually call by first names. That's because we seem to fall into that level of civilization and age grade. These people are old cats. So my question would be, in my line of work, I'm a strategist, I'm a business analyst. And the first question we'll be asking is, why are you doing this? How do you intend to do it? What is it you really want to do? Now, the reason I'm asking is because if I woke up and I wanted to sell you to somebody, that would be my elevator pitch. I want to be able to catch somebody on the elevator. And between the time the elevator comes from first to 10th floor, for example, I have a meeting where I want to sell the Medica Chico. So I'm thinking that we want to get like a bit of a synopsis of what it is you want to do to get there and what's going to be that difference when you get there. But the other thing is, just to lend credence to Lacey's point, there has to be something different as a key selling point that makes us feel like this is not the good old business as usual. So what, if you like, call it a unique selling point, what is that difference that it is we want to see in terms of a breath of fresh air? Most importantly, we people who happen to live abroad or even people who don't live abroad, what is it, what is it you want us to do for you in terms of getting you there and helping you deliver Nigeria from the mess that it is in? I hope I haven't taken too much time. Fantastic but, but question. Uh, Mr. Uh, Idolo, Dr. Idolo, if you could please. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, if really, if really, I'm happy I'm here. I'm really to okay. Okay. Dr. Dolo, can, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Um, if you don't mind, right, can I take um, um, Mr. Bain's question? Because it's a, it's, a, it's a loaded question, and I don't want, I don't want to, um, uh, to diminish the question or not give it... Um, uh the attention it deserves because i i suspect that you you also have a loaded question coming so uh, if you don't mind can i just uh, quickly respond to him okay thank you dr dollar um it's very simple um and i want you guys to hear me and hear me well our biggest problem in nigeria right is not that um it's not that we don't have competent people. It's not, not, it's not that we don't have smart people. We just don't have people who care. We don't have people who care enough. We have people who are okay with the status quo. This is what might seem very, very small, but this is the difference between great nations and weak nations ability the ability for leaders to actually care for their people i live in america i live in nigeria and i'll tell you this for every thousand steps i've taken as a nigerian as a successful businessman in nigeria i could have taken a million steps if i was in america if i if i was taking those steps America, we have a country that does not work for us. It's not working for everyone. It's working for a few people. You need leadership that actually cares, that genuinely cares, not leadership that postulates or postures to say they care. Last 20 years of my life, I've worked with almost every president in the background. I have delivered elections. I've been part of that strategy and every single thing. And what I can tell you is that this people don't care they don't care they don't give a damn they genuinely cares it's because they don't care that's why you're breaking up to maybe full and 
Igbo. The Nigerian situation is the house. Okay? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can we hear can you now. now. Thank you. Okay, so, sorry, about, sorry about that. So, the Nigerian situation is like a building that an arsonist has set on fire, right? Several people are trying to put out the fire. Okay? Several people are trying to... You find that the arsonists who put this country on... Put the building on fire are the main people trying to put out the fire. That's the Nigerian situation. Those who have put the country on fire are trying to put out the fire. Why? In every chaos, Agbero strive. Tau strive. They loot. They come to loot. These guys strive in this chaos because all they do is that they come to loot. Look at these candidates who are running this election. Even the P2B you mentioned was a governor for eight years. Tell you what. Leadership starts with a vision. No matter how small that vision is. Even homes, families, you guys, we are all family men here. You have a vision for your family. These guys, they run Nigeria ground because they have no vision whatsoever. There's no vision. There's no vision as to our common charter. There's no vision to say, you know what, we must have life in Nigeria in four, in four years. There's no vision to say we have world-class infrastructure. There's no vision to say that this is the level of education we have in Nigeria. There's no vision as to what will define us, what will sell ourselves to us, Nigerians, to the world. There's no vision whatsoever as to what they want to do with Nigeria. All they know is that they want to be called, say, oh, the guys, the roadmaster, constructed the best bridges. In a world where the highway is broadband now, we still are announcing every Wednesday that um, uh, contracts for one billion naira road and all that stuff, um, um, and 80% of Nigerians don't have, have data. The world where the likes of Google, Amazon, and the rest are, are shaping foreign policy, where you have the metaverse, where you, where you have companies coming up with stuff that's not going to determine presidents in countries. Our country is not at play. We have no, we have no understanding. We have no understanding of what's happening at a global level. At a time when Nigeria could have taken a position in the, during this pandemic in becoming the food basket of the world, we lost the opportunity. Our farms were taken over by headsmen. At a time where we could sell services, where we have an English-speaking nation where, where we could sell ice services or any service over the world from the comfort of our homes, we have a government, we have people who don't even know what obtains today in this age. These are the same people who are trying to sell because we believe all they say we are being hoodwinked as usual. This guy, I sit with these guys on a daily basis. I talk to these guys on a daily basis. These guys have absolutely no vision of anything whatsoever. And tell you what, I will say this to you guys, you guys in diaspora, I'll say this to you, you guys. The best thing that's happened to us as a nation is the fact that between the primaries and when we start general campaigning, there's a lot of time for people to hear the candidates, for them to debate, for them to speak about their vision for Nigeria. I urge you guys, listen very, very carefully, because you're all smart guys, listen very, very carefully. Interrogate whatever you hear. Listen very, very, very carefully. And you will find that you are being hoodwinked once again. Just listen very, very carefully. We can't afford to make a mistake as a nation. We can't afford to make this mistake as a nation again. Listen very, very carefully to all your leaders. Listen very, very carefully to all your leaders. Listen to their vision for Nigeria, if any, and find out how it affects you and your family first. How it affects your citizenship as a Nigerian. How it affects your business, your, your people, the your country. Listen very, very carefully to these people. You will be amazed. Some of our stats, listen carefully to their vision for Nigeria, interrogates that vision that these people have for Nigeria. You can pretend all you want as a human being, but you cannot pretend that you care for too long. 
you can never pre- you can never pretend that you care for too long. You will expose yourself. You'll be exposed. Listen carefully to these people. Doctor. Yeah, thank you yeah. so much. Uh, really very excited to meet you on a one-on-one basis uh, through this platform. Congratulations you. on your emergence as the presidential candidate. And I want to thank my uh, friend here and old, uh, alumni from my old school for organizing this. Uh, I really want to say that uh, I don't doubt at all your, your heart for the country, your integrity, and your, I wish you were you. I wish this election was between you and Peter. We would all be more relaxed, and uh, we will be talking about the superiority of ideas. But unfortunately, we do know that we have. Uh, is this election is like a situation of David and Goliath, and we have some two Goliaths or three Goliaths in this uh, election that uh, we have to deal with. And we know one. We know for one. We know for sure that these guys are clueless, these guys have no integrity, these guys are, you know, these are just money bags and all that money that they stole from from us is what they are using to come back at us again to keep holding us in bondage. So we know that. Question is how are we going to uh, make sure that these guys, we we keep these, these people at bay and take our country back? And I think that's the same thing that's going to the heart of all well-meaning Nigerians, both at home and in diaspora. We're all looking at what we can do. Everybody's looking at what, I, I mean, I got to a point where I got, I just got fed up of complaining about Nigeria and I was praying about this. Uh, the, whole, the Lord was telling me, what are you doing? And I started to say, well, I'll do whatever I can. I wrote a little book here called Plan B Nigeria. And today, June 12, I started a small effort called the Plan B YouTube, which I'm going to be discussing purely this upcoming election. So just trying to see what little I can do to help my countrymen see the things that you are seeing uh, so that we can all do everything we can. I think everybody can do whatever they can, wherever they, wherever they are, to make sure that we keep this Goliath at bay and destroy them and take our country back. So I really thank you so much for the effort you are making. I would love, like to see collaboration between you and people like Peter Obi, but I think that's what I've gone on that bridge. I hope maybe as time goes forward, we may see things like that, but I don't want to belabor that issue. My question is the big one here, is both stealing, rigging. Uh, we know that these guys have no, these guys have no, they, when you, if you take away the money, if you take away the, these bags of money that they are carrying around, these people have no chance whatsoever to emerge as presidents of this country. We know that. The articles of this world, the bulletin numbers of this world, we know that they have absolutely no chance. The only thing they are coming at us with is these bags of money, and they want to rig their way and steal their way to power. So my question to you uh, is, what is the strategy? Tell us, and how can we participate in this to prevent stealing of votes, rigging, and people uh, stealing this election from us. What is the strategy of your party? How do you think other people can participate in this? What are the things that we can all do? Because that's the way these people are going to be able to defeat Nigeria. They are going to try to steal this election from us. There is no other way. If they, 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 they are clueless, they have no integrity, they have no personality, they have no, there's nothing, they have no ideas. And the only way they are going to come at this election is by with all these bags of money. So I'm just going to ask you, what is the strategy of your party to see that this very strategy of these people is defeated? Their intention to steal this election from Nigerians. Thank you, thank you very much, Doctor. Um, it's, it's a very good question. The answer is very simple. With the current electoral law we have in place right now, okay. Um, Rigging is um, near impossible what they used to do before. So you can't have uh, typical soft ballots and what have you. So the only thing they can do right now is to buy votes, right? And like I said earlier on, you can only buy votes of those in the rural areas who are about 10 million strong, 10, 15 million man strong. The strategy to win this election is for people like you and I 
who can vote, residents in Nigeria, to get them to vote. It's to raise the level of intellectual discourse so that we're able to inspire these people for them to do what is right. Politically, I will tell you some good news right now. And the North, where the, the numbers are, they don't want to hear anything about Tinubu or Atiku. I um I just saw a video early this morning where um, Governor Zulu was trying to preach Tinubu, take the Tinubu campaign, and the people said, no, 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 they rejected it. The same thing for Atiku. If you look at the numbers, the elections he lost in the North, he never was able to pull numbers in the North. He's just not liked on the North, right? So their, you, their money will not necessarily work on the North. They, those guys are looking for a new person, a new leadership, right? For us to get the numbers, we need to get leadership of people who these guys can trust. And we need to get people to vote. To get people to vote, what do we have to do? What are the practical steps we can take to get people to vote? It's very simple. Every day, Nigerians are very good at forwarding skits and what have you. The same way we forward skits, the same way we should forward um, um, material on, on uh, political discourse, our promoting campaigns, okay? We need to do that really justly. We need to set up groups. And for every group you set up, every person in that group should have his own group set up. We need to take this thing like our life depends on this. Groups who are going to dominate this election, this election will be won on social media by popularizing the candidates on social media, dominating the discussion by getting people so passionate that on election day, they actually come out. Two things happen to people on election day. They believe that their votes don't count and they believe that there's going to be electoral violence. Those are two things ADC, my party, is doing stuff to combat the idea in the minds of people. No violence in elections and your votes won't be stolen because the votes are secure now with the new electoral law, okay? But you need to get people to vote and get, get registered and then to vote. And simple practical steps. Just set up different groups. Keep on, no, no group is too small. Set up multiple groups where people keep on forwarding material, keep on forwarding material, keep on forwarding material, keep on forwarding material. Something is going to happen in about four or five months. The material we are forwarding is now going to dominate the discussion in our rural areas. We must get to the point where what those in the urban areas and those in diaspora they are doing is going to intersect with the rural voters and start shifting their mindset from collecting money um, to vote to say, you know what, it's our patriotic duty to get these guys out. But even if they don't join us, we have sufficient numbers if those of us in the urban areas would, would decide to vote. But we have got to be deliberate about this. Set up groups, set, send uh, beat WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Telegram, what have you, promote material, promote content, ask questions. You guys have asked several questions today. Let me tell you this. In the multitude of questions, you will get your candidate and your leading candidates. In the multitude of questions, you will see that a candidate becomes refined. He's gone through a process. When Nigerians have put him or her through a process, and you will see, everybody will see clearly that this is the person we actually want. We must do this deliberately. It's not an effort we'll do today and we'll forget about it tomorrow. We should take this as a last ditch effort to save Nigeria. It's a message you must communicate to everyone. We must be deliberate about this, we must be intentional about this. Set up groups, promote people, not, not just my, my campaign, Promote it will be promote anybody you see as different from these people. Promote, but as in, as people get to see that these are the candidates are leading in this discourse. After a while, you'll see that people start it starts it starts with and people start saying, you know what? Oh, this um this I think I I rather go with this guy. On the night of my primaries, right? When I walked into the hall, I don't know um I, um if um uh, David has the video. When I walked into the hall. We are about eight people who spoke that day. And um, Mohalu spoke just before I spoke. And in speaking, 
he spoke about his credentials and about where he had worked. The people didn't want to hear that. The people wanted to hear the plan, a plan for Nigeria, a vision for Nigeria. The more people see the candidates speaking, speaking, the more you speak, the more they speak, Nigerians will find out who is the real candidate they want for this election. You guys must sustain that campaign. Debates, intellectual discourse, you must sustain it. And you do this through WhatsApp groups where these people belong to. Invite them, let them join there, let them join those groups and let them talk to you guys on a daily basis. Like um, Banyi said, if you, you I went an elevator to, and you want to tell someone, you know, about you, what, what will I say? Let me tell you this, please. Just tell them that I finally found... Sorry. Uh, just tell the person, that like, we finally have a Nigerian who cares about all Nigerians. Who cares enough to make a difference? That's where we are right now. Excellent. Excellent. Um, just time for one more question. I know um, the candidate has a lot to do. Um, obviously, there will be more town halls. Um, but Mr. Richard George, um, I'll appreciate a question from you um, so that we can let our candidate be on his way. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, David. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for organizing this and bringing Mr. Dumebe Kachiku on board. I don't think I have a question at this point. All I would say is uh, it's refreshing to hear Mr. Kachiku's passion. It's a passion I I am fully immersed in. I, I fully connect with that passion. Um, I think from the commentaries, the questions that have been posed by everyone tonight, uh, one thing is obvious that we are all aware of the reality of governance in Nigeria and, and, and therefore uh, this offers us an opportunity to continue to ask thought-provoking questions because it is through questioning and curiosity that hopefully we'll be able to unpack and get to the, the desired uh, promises uh, and the potential that Nigeria has, has been painted as until date. I, I commend you, Mr. Kachiku, for coming out. It is a courageous thing to do in Nigeria. And, um, and I believe, um, without saying an awful lot more, I, I'd like to think this is your first meet and greet. I do not believe this is um, a, a, a session that is designed um, to deep dive into your policies, your programs, your strategies, and all what not, because I think you said something along the lines. You only got... Um, your party's um, a candidacy a couple of days ago. So you're probably just um, going through a period of reflection and trying to pull the building blocks together. So I must excuse you on that, but I'd like to say, well done. I, I, I love what I've heard. Um, I don't know what the substance will be, but I like the passion. I like and I hear patriotism and I am really warmed to it. And I can only wish you the best. Let's see how this journey unfolds. In, in the time frame that we've got to make that decision come 2022. Thank you. Thanks, David, for organizing as well. Thank you very much. Um, it wouldn't be fair to not allow any of the ladies in our midst ask a question before our candidate goes. I do I do beg your pardon uh, to maybe... We have um, RSA here. We also have um, Mrs. Adirami, um Oh, Larry, would you, um, if she could, any of you want to ask a quick question? I know um, Mrs. Adirami is uh, into agriculture. Maybe her question might surround agriculture. Madam. Oh, RSA, have you got anything to ask? Um, if not, then we'll just give Francis a chance to ask a question. Uh, Francis Agby, I'm sure you're here. The final question, please, before Liz um, rounds up so we can let uh, the baby go. Thank you. Yeah, David, hi. So, if I can't turn my video right now, I'm somewhere. Um, no question, just 
Congratulations to Mr. Dume Bukachuku. It's a very bold step, and I wish him all the best. Thank you Thank very you. much. Yes. Thank you. Um, is that Ekme E? Is that Ekme e Radio Hour? Hello. Uh, we have the honor of having your presence here. Please, if there's any um, word or question you'd want to ask. No? Okay, brilliant. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Congratulations to, um, to maybe like very many of the guests have spoken. It is a courageous move in Nigerian politics to contend with the old cats, like what somebody said. Um, it's been a good um, start. And I'm sure most of the people that have spoken have spoken very well, and I'm sure you will take that home and add to your own strategy. It's not an easy, it's not an easy road, but there's nothing that is not achievable. So I wish you well, and we will watch as everything develops too. Thank, thank you very much. Um, brilliant. Liz, round up so we can let uh, our candidate have the last word. Thank you. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes I can hear you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kachuku, let me say congratulations. And uh, I want to, you spoke on certain things that uh, this message needs to get to as many people via WhatsApp groups. And, and these are things we do in the diaspora. But also, uh, I, a, a presidential candidate of another party approached me, a governorship candidate during the election approached me, solo people like yourself who have won their primaries from not so big parties. And it's the same advice I give them. If you can get past the diaspora, we don't know where you would end, but this is where Nigeria is at the moment. Do not um, underplay it because they feed Nigeria. They, they all their families, everybody, they rely on the diaspora. So whatever you say to your household and you have the opportunity to speak to the head of the house in the diaspora, mm -hmm. it's the same thing I tell them. No need. You have already been successful with your primaries. Your next move is to get in touch with the people that can hit all the nooks and crannies. And it is the diaspora. Thank you. It's been a brilliant um, one hour almost an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, I want to first of all thank Dumebi for taking time out of a party being organized in his honor in his house to attend to us. Obviously, we're going to have more town halls um, between now and when the election comes. Um, Dumebi will join us constantly because he's a man of the people and um, he likes to listen to the people answer their questions. Uh, for those who didn't have a chance to ask a question, but who have listened to him, I can assure you that this is not the end. There will be many more opportunities to speak with Dumebi. So Dumebi, if you just want to give us one final uh, message, especially to everyone as you observed in diaspora and what you would want from us, thank you very much. Thank you, David. Um, I yeah, I really enjoyed this. Um, like you just said, I enjoy talking to people. I um earlier on, um, just before this started, in terms of questions, I said um, I don't like being prepared for questions. I don't like being told what questions to be asked. Um, I like people to ask me questions, and I like to answer questions. And even where or when I don't know the answer to a question, it affords me an opportunity to learn something new that aids me in my journey in life. Um, the journey to rescue Nigeria is a journey for a mission that everyone should jump on board. I like the fact that on the Sunday, you guys have taken out time, one hour plus, to be part of this. It's not just about me, um, so they don't need to say thank you to me. I'm saying thank you to, to you guys for um, for doing something patriotic for Nigeria. Um, uh, you don't live in Nigeria, but you care enough about um, Nigeria to be having this this discussion is our patriotic duty to do that. We must do everything possible to rescue Nigeria. My story in the last couple of years is this. Several times I've had to move my fam family overseas, okay? 
um, Dubai, America, parts of Europe each time and be here, there. And that's, that's not the life for me. I found that I was suffering a lot. And I was doing this because I was so worried about the safety of my family in Nigeria. For how long do we continue with this narrative about our country and not do something about it? When this government came, as I said, speaking, I said, saying, you know what, um, this man is divisive, this man is going to destroy this country. I said, speaking, I just didn't care. I never, I don't say this to a lot of people, but for, there are a lot of people on this group that know me very well, so I can share this. In the last seven years, since I said speaking and taking on this government, from trying to arrest me, threats, destroying my properties, um, um, seizing my passport, there's absolutely nothing that they have not done to me. And each time they do it, the very next day, I say something against the government. I say, why should I resign? I say, the government is hopeless. I speak. I let them know that I'm ready to die for what I believe in. When they got this message, they stopped harassing me. They wrote me a letter um, about 12, 13 months ago. I, I hope someone was going to ask the question about agriculture because it has to do with this letter, letter I was written to me. I had designed a program for agriculture, um, a bottom-up uh, strategy to revive agriculture in Nigeria, a revolution in Nigeria, uh, with Algon. It was about a 900 and something million dollar project. I spent close to $60 million on the project. Government was supposed to pay me at some point, and they canceled it. And for some reason, they felt that my speaking against government was because of this. And to shut me up, they wrote me a letter as on general minister of finance to say they were, they were going to pay me $178 million. Um, oh, come take this money. We're all friends. We're fine and all those things. And um, I told them to go to hell. There's no money in the world that's going to shut me up. Nigeria is messed up. Nigeria is finished. Um, those of us who are here, especially me in Abuja, who deals with these people every day, I have service chiefs. You know what a service chief is? I have service chiefs beg me not to learn to speak up. That's because you are speaking, they've just managed to release money to us. I have people reach out to me every day, speak up. You are the only person who's been defying this government consistently. I'm not scared of these people. A lot of people are scared. I encourage those of you who are out there, you don't have some of these risks, but the little and the best you can do is what we've done today, continue to interrogate our processes, continue to ask relevant questions, deep questions, incisive questions, continue to press on the hot button issues, stress these people, stress us, stress the process. Nigeria will be better off for it. The diaspora is very, very important, like Liz has said. And I was saying that, you know what? That's why I said that my strategy is to take on the diaspora because that's where you take on a different level of intellectual discourse that if you can't get into that ring, you know that you shouldn't be in the race at all. I thank you guys. I really appreciate this. And I look forward to having more of this. Have a blessed day. Thank you, everyone. Um, we've heard from Dumebi, and we'll let him go now. Um, once again, I, I'm really grateful for everybody who was able to attend. Uh, for those who didn't uh, ask a question or make a comment, I can assure you that the next session, we will let you guys know sooner rather than later. Everybody have a good evening now. Thank you very much. Thank Take you. care. Yeah, thank you very much. Looking forward to the next session. Thank you. Bye for now. Yeah, bye. bye.